The title of the message uh, this morning for you, this afternoon to you, is in Abraham hastened a tale for Acharit Ayamim. I think from all the parashot that have to do with the life of Avraham Avinu, and I will teach a little bit today also from the new book because there's a lot to be said. Uh, I don't think there is any parasha that is speaking more about the topic and end that I bring in the COVID-19 book, the Besora according to COVID-19. And the question that you, I want you to ask yourself is, is it possible indeed, because the thesis of the Besora according to COVID-19 is that God sent those things like, a COVID-19, he sent things like a calamity like that in order for you and I to hasten and to prepare for his coming. I will tell you flat out that that is the entire reason I wrote the book. So that you will get the right tools, you put them in your hand, understand the reality around you, and most importantly, execute execute if i wrote this book and people will not execute i've done nothing and nothing will come out of this but i have been so much impacted by what i wrote you know you can write something from a place here but you can write something from your heart something that affects you and, and this is really what the besora COVID-19 is, is a scholarly book, but it's not written from a place of my mind. It's written from a conviction. It's written from a place of deep conviction. And this morning, I want to talk for a moment about convictions. Convictions. In the beginning of the portion here, we see Avraham Avinu in a difficult time, in a time that the Torah called Kechom Hayom. Kechom Hayom is never a good time. It's a bad time. It's a time of calamity. It's a time of difficulty. It's a time of a judgment. It's a time of Ram Avinu just had his Brit Milah. It's not good. It's just not a good time for Avraham Avinu. Now, I want to focus on the reaction of Avraham Avinu to the calamity, to the difficulties in his life. Rashi go even further to explain that this day is the third day of his life, of after the circumcision of his new birth. He just been circumcised three days. He's in terrible, terrible pain. The reaction of Avraham is what I want to look with you for a moment at. Because I think it's revealed to us something. Today I can say it's, um, it's a message that you have to share with the world. Look at this. Verse 2, it says, Vayisa enav vayire veyine shlosha anashim mitzavim alav. The text here uses this word, Vayisa enav. It's translated as, he looked up, but it's it's more than this. We have to understand what's happening right now in the world. What is happening in the world, you have to be covered up with a mask. And I want to say it to you clearly, I am not against wearing mask. I'm not, especially around elderly and sick and yeah. No, I'm not against wearing masks. I am against what the marrying of the mask represent. It's not the same. And I want you to understand this. It's a spirit of anti-God in the world. What do I mean by this? It's the opposite of the word Vayesa Enav. The word Vayesa Enav is somebody who look outward. It's somebody who look outwardly. A person who is afraid, a person who is scared, a person who is worried is a person who is covered. He is like this. He is protecting himself. 
The world right now tries to tell you to protect yourself. Is it okay to protect yourself when you go out? Yes. When I go to the grocery store, I wear the mask. Why? Because that's the law. And we need to obey the law. Don't break the law. But understand the spiritual behind it. And if you look at things in a spiritual lens with me, you notice that people are turning a little strange during this time. They're turning a little weird. Have you went um, grocery shopping? Have you went to a store? Have you, you seen what happened if you drop a piece of paper and you pick it up, you come an inch closer to a person? People are uh, acting uh, in, a, in a very knee-jerk reaction, some. Some are very much uh, tense. There is a tension that brought all these masks. Now, when we deal on the days of Kehomayom, we are dealing about days of judgment, like the days today. What Avraham Avinu did is great in the context of understanding the Geula. What you and I have to do today is going to be great if we understand what it means to removing the spiritual mask. There is no spiritual distancing that God wants you to have today from people. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we might be physically distant, but not spiritually distant. When the Torah says, Vaisa enough, he is actually looking for opportunity in the worst day of his life. When is the opportunity to perform a mitzvah? In the worst time of your life. When your finances may be hurting, your house may be hurting, the things are not in order in your life, and you said, oh, I cannot do what I need to do because things are not whole. I'm not whole. And a matter of fact, Torah teaches us when the things in your life are not whole, are not perfect, this is the time, best time to perform a mitzvah. Don't wait for things to get better in order to hasten the Gula. On the contrary, God bring in perfection and calamities in order for you to take the steps to bring the repair faster. And what Abraham Avinu did here, look at the text with me. This is an important shiur today for all of us to understand. Verse 6, verse 7, it says, Avraham Aoela El Sarah Vayomer Mahari Shalosh Seim Kemach Solet Uti Veasi Ugot Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and says, Quick, three sea of choice flour needed. And make it cakes. The Hebrew word that is used here in the text to represent Abraham reaction is the word. Is the word, this is important? This is very very important. Is the word vayemaher? The word vayemaher means that Abraham went with a purpose. He entered into the tent of Sarah with a purpose. Today, God wants to raise people of purpose. There is one question you need to ask yourself today. What is my purpose? What is my purpose? And I go in the book and I explain why God chose Bethsalel to establish the Mishkan. He took a 13 year old, and I explained this in the book. He took a 13 years old for the greatest, greatest task of establishing the Mishkan. Why would he took a 50 years old or 70 or somebody? Why make Betzalel as an example, so qualified to build the Mishkan? For one in the answer in short, he knew his purpose. More than anything else, you need to know your purpose today. When it says, Vayemaher Avraham, it means that Abraham entered with an agenda. 
And the agenda was interesting because the people are coming and he understand that the opportunity is going to be a limited time opportunity. And friends, I want to tell you something. This is a limited time opportunity. Don't say later on, oh God, I given the opportunity during the COVID to speak into people's life and do those things. And I, I didn't do that because we are in a limited time opportunity. God is sending the calamity. He's sending those opportunities so that you take the action. But the action has to be with that purpose. You need to know your purpose today. And you need to fulfill the purpose today. The question you have to ask yourself, what is my purpose? What was the purpose here? Remember the law that I, I delivered to you again and again in the book. Ma'aseh avot siman labanim. The work of the fathers is assigned to the son. That means that everything that Abraham going through here, and you read the story here in slow motion, is a sign for you for the last days. Oh, really? So what is this sign? Sign here to Abraham. Well, this is a prophecy. Abraham is dealing with a prophecy. Notice what it says here in the text. He says to Sarah, he said, what? Take the, let, let's look at the text again. He said to Sarah, take the flower, but not any old flower, the finest flower he took. Choose choice flower. It's the best flower. This is important because in Hebrew, the word kemach, say with me, kemach, kemach is a flower, telling us what is the nature of prophecy that we are actually dealing with here. And what is the nature of this prophecy? You will be surprised. This day that the angel visit him is a very important day on the Hebrew calendar. What is the day that they are visiting him? Well, the word Kemach is equivalent to the number 148. This is an important number in Hebrew. The number for 148 is the number for Pesach, Passover. He is already prophesying through the light of life of Abraham. Abraham is prophesying on the story of Exodus. This is significant. We are seeing here the exit and the prophecy of not just the very first redemption, but also for the final redemption. Remember what it says in Micah chapter 7. In Micah chapter 7, it says that the future redemption will resemble the, 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 the redemption out of Egypt. And here, when he's talking to her, to Sarah, and he said to her, take the Kemach, he, the rabbis of Israel said, this event happening in Passover, it is a prototype, it is a picture to come to give the children of Israel how to leave exile. This entire verses, verse 6 and verse 7 of chapter 18 has to do with leaving the exile and overcoming, overcoming exile as one walking. How are we to do it? Vayemahel Avraham. Abraham. God does not want you to delay redemption today. He doesn't want to, do, do, to delay redemption, but in the preparation, and by the way, what is Abraham is preparing for today? He's preparing for a feast. Abraham is preparing for a banquet. It should make sense to you that we are not talking just about a banquet. We're talking about a future banquet, the banquet of Mashiach. This is why it's significant. You see, in the first meal, Abraham is giving them meat. He's providing them meat. But in what's going to be in the final meal? In the final meal, we're not going to eat meat. We're going to eat Leviathan. Why? What's the difference, the rabbi asked, between Leviathan and having meat? You see, in meat, you have to worry about the details. You have to work about the shechita, the, the kashrut. With fish, there are not many rules. 
It's about the hastening. It's the hastening. And here, Abraham speak to Sarah in preparing for this future, for the redemption. He's giving a picture. This entire event, this entire event is taking place in Pesach. Please understand that. And what he said to her, he said to her, Mahari Shalosh Seim. Kemach. Now look at the beauty of the Torah here. What does it mean? Ma'ari shalosh se'im kemach. If you take this term, ma'ari, hurry, quick, three se'as of choice flower, take those letters, mem, shin, yud, chet. What do you get? Do you get the word Mashiach? Mashiach, the entire the entire coming of the Messiah, I want you to understand that, depends at the quality of the preparation for the meal. The coming of the Messiah, there is a code here, not just about Exodus, but about the Messiah. The Messiah is encoded and he is embedded inside the text today, friend. This is huge. And what is this depending upon? Number one, Mahari. Friend, I am telling you today, you don't have time. You are out of time. I am out of time. Because the sun, the sun is hitting. The sun is right. It's the heat of the day. We don't have time. One number one is the quality of our walk today. We are calling it the fullness of our walk today. The fullness of our walk today is important. Not just the fact that you're walking. Look what he said. Give me the best flower. He's talking about the demeanor of our walk. How do we bring Mashiach to the world today? We bring Mashiach to the world today by preparing with our Shabbat clothes. That's why in Shabbat you never come in ordinary clothes. You come in a beautiful shirt, a suit, and a tie. I don't wear a suit and a tie because it's a very warm day today here, and I don't want to sweat, but I put my very best shirt. What about you? Do you go through preparing for the meal today for this, for this exodus? Are you doing it? Are you getting ready for the final exodus, for the final rapture up to Jerusalem with your very best? There is a purpose in this. And each and every one of you need to understand this today. It's not about writing books. Who care about writing books? I don't care about writing books. I care about the walk that each and every one of you are to walk today as the Malachim are coming. And one of the Malachim, whether you're not, you're good, he's the peerless, the Lord himself. The Lord is coming. Messiah is coming. The question is, will the meal will be ready for Mashiach? And here he said to her, Mahari Shalosh Seim. But it doesn't end there. He have to prepare more. Look at the text but here. He's speaking Hebrew? specifically, specifically about the day that this is happening. This entire ordeal with the Malachim happened in Pesach to talking about the redemption. And Abraham entered to the tent of Sarah and tell her, hurry up and prepare Prepare this, this cakes. Mahari Shalosim Kemach is an acronym for Sire. This is where I've been. And let me continue for a moment with this. The question you need to ask yourself is what type of flower did she use? If it, this entire preparation for the meal is about the coming of the Messiah and our preparation for the Messiah, and if the, son, the work of the fathers is a sign for the son, what can we learn about this preparation? Look with me at what the rabbis of Israel had to say. Kemach solet, it's a special type of flower, the finest, coarse, coarse flour made into sticky mess. As the grain, it is made from underdeveloped. The thin wafer-like mass is used to absorb the rising impurities of what is, is boiling in the pot, used by the cooks in the kitchen. This is an amazing word, giving us about the type of, of 
flower that is being used. The word in Hebrew here, kemach, solid, represent again the type of, look, look at this, what it says here in this, the choice of flower is the Hebrew word kemach, solid. Now we understand already that the term mahari, shalosh, sehim, kemach is translated to the word mashiach. If you take the end letter, from each one, you get the word Mashiach. But what is the Kemach solid? What is the ingredient that to make the food palatable? Again, the question is, what would be palatable? What will be acceptable to the God, to the Malachim that's coming, to the special Malach, to the God who is coming? You know, if, if there would not be a meal, they would not have even stopped at Avraham Avinu. Avraham Avinu is the one who initiated the Geula. He is the one who initiated by bringing him in, but he called upon Sarah. Avraham and Sarah represent the Jew and the Gentile who are working together. They're walking it together. They're working together. But what Sarah had to do, she had to use this kemach, this flower, that is very special flower, that was able to absorb the impurities. Friend, you want to know what God wants from you today? He wants you to prepare to the meal with God by absorption of the impurities. I speak in the book about the golden calf. And what did he do? He took the golden calf. He tried to destroy it. He could not destroy it. He spread it. Abraham, I mean, Moses spread it and then he made them drink it, right? He made them drink it. It was like a gold glitter. He said, here, take a swig. Go and drink it. They were able to consume it. That's represent the klipot, the yetzerara, your evil inclination, the thing that you're starting struggling with. There is a remez here for us. How do we prepare to the We need to prepare not just the meal, but the preparation was of Avraham and Yitzchak to receive the good news. I mean, Avraham and, and Sarah to receive the good news about Yitzchak. And how is it? It was to do with the ingredients to absorb the impurities. I am talking about this again and again, that God has sent the COVID-19 so that you will be able to absorb the impurities. Now, this is a big thing because you think, oh, Sarah just stuck a bunch of little cookies and make them a little cookies. No, she did not do that. Now we know why she did what she did. She took, friends, listen to me carefully. You're asking the right question. What we need to do? This is the good question to ask. Sarah took to make those three cakes she used the equivalent listen to me carefully right now of 432 eggs do you think she made this tiny cake no 432 eggs equivalent to this look what Nachmanides had to say about this what does it mean to absorb the impurity? You need the tools. You need to put them into the mix to be able to absorb it, to prepare to a big, great celebration with God. You need to prepare your house. If you know that Rabbi Shapira is coming to visit you now, what would you prepare? You probably go out of the way to prepare something very nice because you know I'm coming, you know? If you know that the president, the future president, come to your house, would you prepare more? Probably more. But what would you go about in preparation if you know that Messiah, our righteousness, coming to your house? How much more? And that's why it says in Revelation, he's standing at the door, he's knocking at the door. He's here. How much more do you need to prepare? Look at Nachmanides. Look what it says. Although it was Pesach, there was no danger of it becoming 11. It was not Hamed. As the heat of the day would prevent this from happening. Let me say it again. The heat of the day would prevent it from happening. The calamity was used for the benefit and for the advantage of Avraham Avinu and Sarah our mother. The benefit was in the, in the heat that was hurting Avraham Avinu. 
Yes, calamities are going to come. Learn how to use those things. Learn how to use strategies. Learn how to use things in the life that are, oh my goodness, this is the end of the world. Look at the tsuris God is giving. No, if God gave a tsuris to you, if given a lemon, make a lemonade. Use those things. God is sent a COVID-19, not that you suffer, no, that you will prepare for the feast. That's why God has sent it to you. Look at this. Look what Nachmanid is saying here. This is incredible. As the heat would prevent this from happening, it would be a kosher, kosher cakes. According to Nachmanidis, the reason Abraham ordered Sarah to use such a huge quantity of flour for just three men is equivalent of 432 eggs. Ladies and gentlemen, is that Abraham may have invited numerous dignitaries to share this meal with them. You want to know what we need to do? Here you go. You ask this question again and again. I see this question asked. What do we need to do? We need to prepare the house to expand the house. Why? Because Nachmanides says, no, it wasn't just the three Malachim. It was Africa, and it was Asia, and it was the Middle East. People are calling me all the time, saying, oh my God, Israel is making a peace agreement with the Arabs. It means that the Antichrist is about to come. Foolishness. Foolishness. What it means is that the highway to Jerusalem is being established right now. The house is being opened up for all the nations to come up and to have an encounter with the God of Israel, with the Messiah of Israel. Rejoice for this peace agreement. What people are thinking. God is using this and will use this because he wants the dignitaries to come. He wants all the nations to come. One of the things I talk about the book is what Yeshayahu says. Ki beiti karebet My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Take the first letter. Ki beiti bet You add them up. What term you get? Mashiach ben David. What do you think? Do you think the house is just a house for the Jewish people? It's a house for all the nations who want to come and make Aliyah. It's a house for all those who want to join up. All those who want to say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. And Abraham Avinu is establishing here this house. What Abraham is doing is Sarah is baking three cakes equivalent to 432 eggs. Please understand, this is a giant cake and this is important the quality of what we are establishing today is, is is critical i see some people asking us the question what do you need to do here's what you need to do open your house open your house invite people in and talk to them about Geula. talk to them about mashiach tell them about mashiach tell them mashiach is knocking the that's what you need to be doing today tell him it's not too late tell him not to be scared tell him not to be all worried tell them that right now there is opportunity today to receive hashem and to prepare their house tell people the house is not in order but it's not too late i know people want to say it's doom the doom and it's the end of the no it's not the end of the world Yeshua said, until heaven and earth stand, so do will be the mitzvah. I'm looking straight at the sun right now. Heaven stand, it's mean that we are not done. So stop looking at these elections right now. Turn off CNN. Get busy in the things that are actually going to be fruitful for this kingdom. Look at this. This is amazing. It is not just the hospitality. Rosenfeld, and I am, I am appreciate, it is more than the Achnasat. It is the quality of the mitzvah. Number one, don't drag feet. Do not drag feet. Look outside. Take your spiritual mask. Take those things spiritually off. And look for the opportunities today to bring people in. Look what's happening in Africa now. Why? Because God wants Africa. God wants Asia. God wants South America. He wants the nations. He loves the Goyim. But he wants them to come in Kedusha, to his house. That's why he, say, he said what he says to Abraham, Abraham said to Sarah. Look what Rizkuni says here. This is important. He said, I see you got make cakes and make it into cakes. 
something that does not take long to bake. He was conscious that these men were in a hurry to get going. Friend, this is what I am telling you today. The people will forget. They will, for I promise you something, the second that the COVID will stop or will be in the people will forget. We have opportunity today. This is why I released this book now, today, and this is it. today. To now, we need to talk to our people specifically for our Jewish people, specifically for the nations. They need to get it now. And that's why Avram Avinu understood something. He had a golden opportunity. There is a golden opportunity here that is not to be missed. And I'm telling you something with you, with your friends, with your family, with your love. There is a golden opportunity. People are sensitive right now. They are going to listen. But you need to speak to them. You must be able to invite them. And the way you speak to them is not preaching at them. Don't do that. Do a mitzvah. Meet a physical need. Avraham Avinu didn't have an ID card, didn't ask for the DNA. He just brought them in. And then he ministered to them. What do you think he did in the, in the tent? Today? He told them about Torah. He spoke to them about God. This is an important because this area, this time, is the most important time. This time that I call the time of making the cakes, preparing those cakes. This is the time right before the Geula, because the meal represents the Geula. The, the feast, when you sit with the Malachim, that is a picture of Chazal says of the Geula. We are not there yet. We are in between Ben and Metzarim. And in a time right as they're coming in the time of preparation. Today we are a time of preparation, preparing our house. What is he said in Exodus 25? Eh? He says, Build me a house or I will dwell within you. This is the time now, the final preparation. Look what the Midrash Tamchuma tell us. I want you to understand the prophetic significance of this time. Yes, I know this is not easy to hear. I know people just want to feel that they are fine and they just want to have God come and rapture them. He's not going to do that, people. Get away from this toxic theology. God wants you to prepare a house for him so he will come and tabernacle with you and have a meal with you and genesis 18 is a picture of the future meal that yeshua spoke about it the marriage the banquet this is what Hazal said not me look at anchuma together with me did you ever notice the gap from when the tabernacle was established and when the first service took place, have you ever noticed this? Look at this with me. Rabbi Hanina said, on the 25th of Kislev, the work of the tabernacle was completed, but it was left folded up until Nisan. As it is written, on the day of the first month, on the first month, you shall set up the Mishkan of the Tent of Meeting, Exodus 42. Israel were murmuring against Moshe, saying, why wasn't it erected immediately? Maybe some flaw happened to it. The only one intended to mingle the joy of the tabernacle with the month in which Yitzhak was born. As it says, need and a cake. Here you go, make cake. And, that, and on that he said at their appointed time. Let me explain to you what the rabbis say here. They say that this time from then the Mishkan was ready. The Mishkan to the first service of the Mishkan representing the redemption. This time called the kneading of the cake. The making of the cake. The preparation of the cake. The preparation of the meal. And the delay came from Kislev which is Hanukkah, all the way to Nisan is because the preparation of the food. That's one sad Jewish party. If you go to a Jewish home, the one first thing my mother told me, the most horrible thing about this, if you come to a Jewish home and there's no food, God forbid if there's no food, forget that. If there's no good food, it's the end of the party. That's why my mother, you come to my house, always crazy amount of food. And if you don't eat enough, she's going to give you a dirty look. Why is it? It is because 
We have to have the quality of the food, the quality of the preparation. And that is an allegory, friends. This is the allegory of he, Abraham entering into the tent and saying, Sarah, get ready. God saying to you today, get ready. By the way, what is the name of the Messiah who is coming? His name is Shiloh. Shiloh. Shiloh, like it says in Genesis 49, we're going to read about this in a couple of weeks. What is Shiloh? A gift to him. A gift to him. Yes, he's going to come. He's going to tabernacle with you. He wants you to prepare this meal for him. You representing this, your heart, your covenant, your ability to shed your clipot, ability to remove yourself from the Yetzirah and bring in others. That is what going to make Kislev and Nisan shorted. Yeah, is Kislev and Nissan, can they, can they become near, closer? Yes, if we prepare ourselves and hear what it says, it says, oh my goodness, are you ready for this? Look at this, look what it says again. It was the only one intended to mingle the joy of the tabernacle with the month which Yitzchak was born. Are you following what I'm telling you here? Who is it like in the story? What is the news that are coming to be delivered to Avraham Avinu? He is the birth of Yitzchak. Who is Yitzchak in the story? Yitzchak is the Messiah, son of David. There is a good news that need to become for Abraham, which again, Abraham represents Israel. Israel represents Abraham. And what is the good news? The good news is Yitzhak is about to come to the world. Yitzhak is a picture of the Messiah, son of David. But before Messiah, son of David, can come to the world, what have to happen? Israel have to prepare the meal that will bring the Besorah so that the, that, that the gospel can go out, the goodness can be received. And that is dependent upon Israel. And that's why Yeshua said, you will not see me until you say, Baruch Abba Beshem Adonai. The question we have to ask ourselves is this. What would have happened if Abraham house wouldn't be ready to receive the Malachim. This entire thing is a picture of the Geula. If Avraham did not have the, the ability to receive the Malachim who are coming in, Yitzchak would not have been born and the Geula would have been delayed. We are in a season of making the cake. You want to know what is this season we are from the point that the heavenly tabernacle is ready. Check. Everything is ready in heaven. Everything. Only thing that is waiting right now is the groundwork here on earth to prepare for the coming of Messiah. Stop looking to heaven and say, I have nothing to offer. Stop saying that and get yourself with the tool. You have everything to offer today. This is what this is about. It's not about books. It's about you. It's about me. It's about what we need to do like Sarah to prepare the cake. I wonder what Sarah, our mother, would think about Rebbets and Shapira cakes. My wife loved making cake. And then maybe that's why I, I, I married my wife for this incredible, incredible cake capabilities that just capture my stomach. But we are in the season of making the cakes. Look at this. This is rabbits and cake. How can you re reject this? We need to make the cakes and make the food out of 432 eggs to invite the entire world. This is the final episode before the Geula. I took some of those pictures, rabbits, and I hope you don't mind. I stole them. I saved them in the phone for when I'm really, really hungry. This is what Sarah made. She made those cakes and they were beautiful because they were ready. They were ready for the people to receive it. Thank you, Rebetzin. One day I prayed that we will be able to do this kind of banquet and bring all the people all over the world to be able to taste those cakes. Sarah would definitely would approve those cakes, Rebetzin. But we need 432 eggs. We need more eggs. We need to invite more people. More people need to come in. The question is, who are you bringing in? Who are we bringing in? 
What do we need to do to bring them in? Was it enough for Sarah to make the cake? The answer is no, because look at the next verse. Look what God is saying. Very next verse. Then Abraham ran to the herd. He took a calf, tender and choice, and gave it to the servant boy who hastened to prepare it. Who is this boy that was hastening to prepare it? He's talking about Ishmael. Now listen to this. He is running. This is, this is important to understand. It. He ran. It says here in the text that he, he, he says, and Abraham ran to the herd. But you see, the Hebrew word here that is used for herd, bakar, is give us a linguistic clue, friends. I am, I am revealing this to you now a big soul that i want you to understand this is important look what it says what is the word bakar you want to know what you need to do this is arguably the most important message that i can give you for this last day what you need to do the word bakar if you look at the word bakar is the word boker morning morning is the time of geula if you take the word boker and you flip the letters of the word boker, what word do you get? Kever. Kever means tomb. Abraham had two choices, either to be inside himself, to be buried inside himself, or say, hey, those people are going to bring the geula. Yeah, they bring the gospel with them. Abraham knew that, and that's why he is running. Today, you need to run toward the geula to do the activities who will bring the keula again. He says here in the text that he is running to the herd. The word herd is a linguistic term that used to represent the morning. Morning is the time of geula. Abraham knew that the geula is near. My question to you today, do you know that the geula is near? Do you know that this is near or not? That's important because the word here, boker, Bakar, the morning. It's represented the days of Geula. Abraham knew that he can hasten the Geula. And you need to know today where you're running to. You are running to bring in the Geula. Abraham Avinu didn't know who they are. Didn't exactly. But he knew through the spirit of God. Because he had the spirit. He had the spirit. He knew somehow that they are going to bring. They bring a message of redemption to his family. Do you know that? Do you know that today? Or do you today close in your side yourself? Take the word boker, take the word geula, and that's the two ways you can look at the geula. You look at the geula in the context of kever. Again, the word kever. Oh, I'm so scared. I'm so worried. Oh my gosh. I am, I am absolutely terrified. That's the tomb. Or you look at the world right now and say, no, I'm looking at the world and I'm looking for the day Mashiach coming. Which way are you going to choose? How are you going to re look at the regula today through the boker and say, there is an opportunity here and I'm going to take this opportunity? Or are you going to say, I'm going to be closing myself right now because I'm suffering? What is it going to be? And Abraham Avinu chose to run to the bakar, to the boker, because I understand this. And look at this. Look at this with me. What is the text is saying here? Vayikach the son. Look at this. Let's learn Hebrew together, friends. The things I am delivering here to you today through the Holy Spirit is not my own word. Look at this. What is the text says? El Abakar, also related to the book, Eratz Avram. Avram writing to bring them in, to bring the Geula. Yes, you need to work toward redemption. Redemption not going to come like that. Redemption requires work. He is going to complete the work, but you have to do the work to bring the Geula. It's not enough to have the Mishkan established. You have to prepare it. Also, and it is you, your ability to come over the clipot that will determine that. Look at this. And he took a calf tender. But what is Hebrew says? Tender and choice. Look at the Hebrew word. Vayikach. And he took Ben Habakkah. He took the son of the calf. 
He took the calf son. Who is this calf representing, friend? Who is this calf? If Isaac representing son of David, who do you think the son of the calf, the one who appears as a golden calf, friends? I did not write it in the book not to upset a lot of people. Who do you think this calf that have to be slaughtered, that have to be destroyed in order to the meal that took place represent? Who do you think it is? I know you know the answer. I know you know the answer at this point. Look at what the rabbi said. And a bakarat, he ran toward the head. In the morning, Abraham ran. Is the secret, friends. Is the secret of the final redemption that is found in the word tender and choosiest. The very best. Who, who he took? He took the very best. Ben Habakkar. And the question is, who is Ben Habakkar? Because Ben Habakkar had to be present in order for Isaac to, to receive the news about Isaac. Who is this Ben Habakkar? And why God, why God said to, to the rabbis that that is the entire story of the secret of the folk redemption. Who is this Ben Habakkar? The son who will bring the morning. The son who will prepare for the Geulah. Who is this? See, the word Ben Abakar, friends, in Hebrew, literally can be been translated, not just as ran to the herd, but it means son of the morning, the son who will bring the morning, the son of the Geula, the son of the redemption. And the question is, who is the son of the redemption who had to be slaughtered? Who is the son who had to be slaughtered? Who is the son of the calf? That today is filled with reddish color that had to be that had to be slaughtered for the banquet to took place. The rabbis connected it to Hosea. Exactly. Son El Shofar, you got it right. He have a name. And he called in Jewish literature Ephraim. Hosea 11, 11 says that Ephraim become like this eagle, the eagle melamda, the trained heifer, but prefer to a trash, trash. I place yoke upon a slick neck. I will make Ephraim do advanced plowing. Judah will also do a plowing. Jacob will also do the final plowing. He's talking about the three groups. The ra- <laughs> this is so amazing. The rabbi of Israel said that those who represent Mashiach, son of Yosef, the nations, the goim, they are the representing of this calf. In rabbinic literature, friends, this is important in rabbinic literature. It is Ephraim who is called this Egelrach, this this trend, this this heifer, and what happened here to the heifer? Egla melomda. He come to his fullness. Here in Hebrew, you read the word trained heifer, but the word Egla melomda literally mean that he came to the fullness. Ephraim is coming to the fullness. Yeshua is the is the one who had to be slaughtered in all in order to make a way for Ben David. You follow why I'm telling you this is rabbinical interpretation. In order for Mashiach ben David to come, Isaac, Mashiach ben Yosef had to die. On one way, it's talking about the two Messiah, Messiah ben Yosef and Messiah ben David. But in another level, it's talking about the nations. And here we're talking about three different groups that are coming together. Look at this. Look at this text again with me. Ephraim, Judah, and Jacob. What is the difference between Judah and between Jacob? When it's talking about the Judah, he's talking really about predominantly about the Jewish people. 
So look at this. Look at the formula that is given by Hosea. Judah represents the Jewish people. Ephraim representing everybody who believe in Yeshua as Messiah today. Messiah ben Ephraim. That is all who believe in that. Okay? And who is Yaakov represent? Zera Israel. Those Jewish people who are scattering, they are not allegedly Jewish, they have been inquisitions, pogroms, etc. Those are, all of them have to gather in the last day. You are going to, anybody who watch me right now is going to be falling to one of those three groups. No matter who you are, you are falling into these three groups. And here we see a formula. Let me make it clear to you here. I will spell it to you. Way black on white. Look at this. What it says here in the text, it says you are to take and make three cakes. Shalosh Seim Kemach. This is amazing. Shalosh Seim Kemach, the three cakes, equal in Hebrew to 741. What is the number for 741? Messiah, son of Ephraim. Mashiach, Ben Ephraim. We see the formula here today. Messiah, son of Ephraim. Yeshua, the Messiah, had to come, had to die in order to prepare the way for Mashiach, Ben and David. Today, we have a job to do. You ask me, what is your job? Our job is to take the impurity out of Mashiach Semifrain. Remember, it has to be pure, pure, pure. We have to bake it in and present it to the Malachim who are coming in, presenting it to God himself who is coming in. In essence, it's our ability to bring the gift, she law, to God, presenting to God Yeshua the Messiah without, pure, without impurities. That's going to determine the Geula, friends. Shalosh Seim Kemach, again equivalent in Hebrew, to Messiah, son of Ephraim. I hope everybody understands this show today. We're seeing the clearest picture of the coming of the Messiah, friends. Some of those revelations that I'm revealing to you today are revelation I could not even put the Besor according to COVID-19 because people want to hold to the old Jesus Christ. But if you hold to the old Jesus Christ, he cannot come as son of David. Please, print the finest. Remove the impurities. Remove the impurities from your life. Grace, three cakes. Ephraim, Judah, David. Okay? Another way to look at that is like that. Three cakes. Ephraim, Judah, and all of the in the house of Israel have to come together. The three group of people have to come together. But it is starting with Sarah. And it is starting with Abraham Avinu willing to mesh them all together. There is a meshing of the cakes all together that taking place. We need to learn how to mesh Gentiles and Jews and those with Zerah Israel all together. Stop worrying about who you are ethnically and come into the house so you will be meshed together. So you will prepare. You will become this cake. You will become this perfect cake. To give to the Messiah today. All the believers of Yeshua today in the world are at Mashiach ben Ephraim. Why? Because his Ephraim is the name of Yosef. He's the one who's not recognized. We have to take the actions to extract from him these Egyptian clothing. And that's what the book is all about in order to present this gift to Hashem. He is the gift, Shiloh. He is become the gift. Not just a gift to us, but a gift to Hashem. The fact that we were able to extract the, impure, the purities out of the impurities. Number two, if you are Jewish, you also have a job. Hurry up. Help the nations in preparing this cake, this cake called the nation. We have a job as Jews. The Jewish people also have to recognize him. And... 
all those Jewish tribes. Why am I going all over the world trying to find Zerah Israel? Because of what Hosea has said. Again, I want you to read this and meditate on this today. Ephraim will become this calf. Chazal said, here Rabbi Milubavitch, the Lubavitch Rabbi said this, that the calf that was slaughtered is none other than Ephraim. The, that represent the, the, the Gentiles. I didn't say it. The rabbis of Israel say it. I will make Ephraim do advanced plowing. Judah shall be doing the main plowing. And Jacob will be doing the final plowing. We see here a picture of the fullness. Friend, this is the type of messages that are in the Besorah according to COVID-19. I want you to get this book. I want to pray for you. You're doing plowing today. You know, a person doing plowing is a person who moves forward. You're moving forward in the plowing. Mashiach ben Yosef has died on the cross in order for the Besorah of Ben David to come. But it's not enough for him to die on the cross. Now, it's part of the preparation of the meal. We have to resurrect and prepare through him the cakes, the calf. Now you understand the meal would have been incomplete. The meal would have been incomplete without the calf. And God would not have received him. one of the Malachim, I believe, was the Lord in the flesh. By the way, I do believe it. He could not have received it. They could not have come with incomplete meal. What meal are you preparing today? Who are you in this story? Do you simply say, he died for my sins and I'm good? Or do you prepare today? to this final, final revelation. Do you prepare yourself today and others from these words? And Abraham hastened, and Abraham Avinu hastened. I want to pray for those who are hastening today. Those who got the vision of the depth of this word this morning. It's your time. It's this time God has made. Hurry up. Don't look back. Bring your finest. Ask God to extract the impurities from your life so that you will be this acceptable cake. You see, Yeshua already died. The calf is ready. But he died so that you will take the work of Sarah. Sarah. Sarah and Avraham Avinu. So you will take this task now. The calf is ready. But you see, the complete meal is not ready. Just as the Mishkan was ready, but the people were not ready. Something had to happen in Abraham's heart and Sarah's heart. Similarly, something had to happen in your heart today. You can and you will be this perfect vessel. The enemy has been lied to you and tell you, I'm a sinner. I cannot be this acceptable cake for God as an offering. The offering to God is you. Your ministry. Look how Sarah went. 432 eggs, equivalent to 432 eggs. How far are you willing to go? How far are you willing to go to be the vessel that God has called you to be? Don't let viruses, elections, other calamities, don't let it determine which vessel you're going to be. 
in the name of Yeshua, I pray for every vessel that is watching me, for every cake and for every meal that is prepared as the meal of the Messiah. It starts with us. Our desire is our speedy, but it's also have to do with the tools, with the oil. It's have to do with the tools, the tools that God has given me, and so many of us wearing. We want to do the right things, but we don't have the right tools yet. Lord, send those tools to your people. Torah, mitzvot, gemilut chasadim. Send the tools to your people so that they will be the tools that make the acceptable in, the, the acceptable ingredients, those tools, so the people of God will establish a acceptable offering so that the tabernacle will be complete. The meal will be complete and many will be joined. Those who accept Yeshua today as Ben Yosef. Those who are waiting him as Ben David. And even those among the house of Israel who are scattered all over the place. We all plying together. We all plying ahead with never looking back. As this all about in the name of Yeshua. May the Spirit of God use this message to minister to the people of God. Amen, amen. Shabbat shalom, everybody. We'll see you at 3 o'clock. Limudei Nevihim. Make sure you check out the new book. God bless you. Shabbat shalom.